Kevin has been working on Riot since 2018, on not just on Riot, but also on the Rap Store. Like, nice fireplace, fantastic. Thank you. Riot is on fire. Um, well, and he's going to talk about Philip, a uh, very good friend he has been working with for quite some time. And yeah, let me. Go. All right. And, and um, basically, it's also about testing and how to improve the testing environment for those working on Riot. I don't know if he will talk about the Rap Store as well. Uh, but uh, well, no. All right. But, so back to Kevin. Thank you. My name is Kevin Weiss. I'd like to talk to you about Philip. Testing in Philip. Philip who? Not Philip Bloom. I have a nice little reference hardware in the loop that I'd like to talk about eventually. <laughs> OK. Now, we all know testing is important. But why is testing important? Because we are not perfect. I am not perfect. I admit it. The only thing that I've ever ran successfully the first time is Hello World. It was a beautiful program. There are also many moving parts in an embedded operating system. You wouldn't think that changing the DMA here would break, break printf over there. But it does, and it did, and it was tested, and it was fixed. There's also many layers that need to work on top of each other. So it could be as small as this piece of metal must successfully touch this other piece of metal to, I don't know, routing your IPv6 addresses in the correct way. Finally, I know most of you are only on temporary leave from the mental institutions, but <laughs> proper testing will help you get permanent dismissal. So let's start by saying what kind of tests are there. You have your basic static and build tests, which require a CPU, sometimes a large CPU. And we take care of that in Riot with Murdoch. You also have simulation tests, which can be handled with native. I want my 2 plus 2 function to return a 4. And it doesn't matter how many white spaces I have. It better return that 4. That's how it works, yes? Four, good. Multi-board networking. Uh, I wanted to bring this up. We are an IoT operating system. It's very important that we test, when, uh, we test the networking aspect of it. And IoT Labs does a fantastic job, and it's well integrated with Riot. Then we have the on-target hardware in the loop. So this is taking a board, plugging it in, and identifying the board-specific behaviors that you get. We can do this with Murdoch and triggering with GitHub labels, or ideally, board maintainers should be playing their part. The thing that I was interested in is testing against a reference. The first thing that I do when there's a problem is whip out a scope and start hooking up lines. I wanted that capability for everyone, because not many people have a scope in their back pocket. So I tried to address this with what I'd like to call Philip, which is a custom, no, it is a reference board. The challenge with using a reference board is you have not only a CPU, not only a board, not only the reference device, but custom wiring that you have to deal with. Now, I'm not that crazy. Other people do this. Other people have it. Embed has their test shield. Uh, there's this 96 boards on Zephyr, which is a company. There's not 96 boards. That's a lot of boards, just the company name. Uh, and we have our different frameworks. We have our different uh, simulations. Everyone has their own flavor. We, as of a few hours ago, <laughs> We're able to get 13 boards up and running on our uh, hardware in the loop rack. And at one point, Embed had 14. However, on their last release, they were only testing four. 
So, hmm. Now, I've been talking a lot about Philip, and really, what is Philip? What is Philip to me? What is Philip to you? It is qualified slave firmware flashed on a blue pill or Nucleo F103RB, where you can interface using what I like to call Philip Pal, coordinated by a memory map manager, displayed to the developer with a shell or to a machine with a simple Python class called Phil. What can Phil or Philip do for you? It has SPI and I squared C uh, slave implementations where you can change the registers, change the in endianness of accessing those registers, get information such as how many bytes were actually sent or received, and inject certain uh, errors. So we have, say, a problem getting a data knack, but it's sometimes hard to reproduce that problem, especially if you don't have the exact same sensor that, that was providing that exact same data knack. Here you just say, give me a data knack, and it does it. We have UART that you can set into different modes, get parity errors. Uh, we have some GPIO traces, so just you know, how long was it high, how long was it low, and a number of other things, such as ADC, PWM, DAX, and RTCs. However, those last asterisk ones are not qualified. What do I mean by qualified? Well, in order for this to be a reference device, it must be qualified in some way, certified in some way. Every major release, I qualify it by doing regression tests on the interface, flashing and building, obviously, on each the blue pill and the Nucleo F103RB, testing against FTDI, uh, FT, FTDI uh, UART chips. So let's hope that they are implemented correctly. Maybe they aren't always, but... And manually testing I squared C, each of the features that I claim that I represent, uh, each of the features tested against a scope for the I squared C, SPI, and pin traces. Now, that's all, that's all wonderful, but how do you talk to it? Sometimes it's just too much effort to try to get all these things running together. Here, you just you, it's distributed with, uh, pip, uh, uses pip to distribute your interface. You have shell-based commands for developers. You have a Python class for the automated tests. And it's designed in such a way, because I like microcontrollers, you interface to it like it's a microcontroller. You have registers. And the nice thing about this is you also get namespaces. So if you want to, say, set your I squared C access mode to a 16-bit, you can just say 1. If you want to change the clock stretch to delay when you try to read your register in I squared C, you can change it to 1,000 in the documentation. It's in microseconds. And that would be one millisecond. And then, and then you can read the amount of bytes that were actually, or, uh, you can see the amount of bytes that were actually read from the slave device. Now, if you're a developer, it's as easy as pip install, connect the DUT, flash the firmware, run Philip, shell, run, shell, run. <laughs> if you are, uh, if you're as lazy or almost as lazy as me, you would, I got Matthias at least. If you're almost as lazy as me, you would be, you would want just an automated test to run through all this thing all these things, and we have Robot Framework that tries to address this. Now, Robot Framework is not a replacement of the current tests we have. It simply fills in the gaps that, that are missing from our tests, at, at least our automated tests, and it's designed so that I don't have to be flashing all the time. We simply want to expose the API that we're using for the peripherals that we're trying to test, and then add all the test logic in a higher layer. To do this, you recursively clone robot framework, install the requirements, wire up the board, call make robot tests, and then check the logs, which are nice, very, very verbose, 
and nested. So because they're so verbose, you can kind of skip through them. Now, I get all the time people saying, hey, show me your rack, show me your rack. And here it is. We took a rack. We, with lots of sweat, blood, and tears, made it into CI testing rack. It, it supports many different types of boards, and we really wanted to be able to support different types of boards, not we test 100 Nucleo F, uh, F4 11REs. So we wanted to cover many areas, and you could see you have your standard uh, M0, M1, M3, M4s, uh, Arduino stuff, even the ESP, although it's an asterisk, it, it works, but there's a little tool chain problem. It'll be fixed, no problem, no problem. Uh, because I am very lazy, I also don't like spending time maintaining this, so I designed it so that I don't have to maintain it that much. If there's any problems, I have modules to switch it off. I didn't have to even worry about wiring up these things, because I'm pretty bad at that. So we use Wi-Fi, and we can fit eight boards in a one-unit rack. Uh, because I like hardware so much, I also designed a custom board to help with the maintenance, which allows a nice pinout, and so that I can connect to the device under tests, the UTs. I call it blue pill hat, because you just put a blue pill on it. Now, what has Philip done since I started this project about a year or so ago? Maybe more. It seems like a lot more. Uh, we fixed, of course, some I2C drivers. That was the original intent of this. We also fixed some flashing problems, exposed some API issues, uh, prevented regressions, I think, and allowed, some, yeah, allowed us to run some nice tests. I mean, earlier today, we got uh, ESP merged because we can just log on there, run the tests, no problem, from here. And we didn't have the ESP here. Yeah. Anyways. Um, the, the, the most important thing, I think, can be summed up with Moore's Law, which is, oh, it's kind of hard to read. The best way to get a great, uh, the right answer on the internet is not to ask a question, but to post the wrong answer. I guess Cunningham's Law is not, uh, is holding true. It doesn't work in real life. Uh, but uh, the point that I wanted to make <laughs> with this is that I did some maybe silly things in the design, and that got other people interested. And other people, smarter people, were able to go and do great things in test it, with testing in other places. It's just, just playing around with this got people involved. Now, it was not easy. There were, were many challenges. I mean, usually, if something's not working, it's not one thing that's a problem, it's five things. And to try to identify those five things, I pull out a connector, I measure it. Yeah, the connector pin is there. I put it back in. It's, now I measure it. No, it's not. What, what's going on? And then finally, I figure out, OK, this connector is really bad. And then it turns out that it wasn't even the connector that was a problem the whole time. It was some flashing tool. There's crazy wiring uh, requirements because each board is different. We can't just take a standard Arduino header. We have to ac account for all the different types. There are tool chain flashing reset problems because we uh, manage the testing through a Raspberry Pi. Uh, we have certain issues running Riot and make reset and make flash there, which is in some ways nice because it exposes these problems so that we can fix it within Riot. We have spatial requirements. Uh, we can't have a whole lab to fill with an air-conditioned 19-inch rack. I have to fit as many boards as I can in the small allotment, which means custom enclosures, and I'm very far from a mechanical engineer. There's some, the, the generic infrastructure issues, you can burn out your boards by flashing too much, the, the network can just go down, uh, you, uh, you have power issues. Has anybody tried to power a whole bunch of Raspberry Pis with one of these nice fast chargers that's like, I can deliver eight amps, no problem. 
and then it keeps shutting down because it's smart. Yeah, not, not very nice, not very nice. And you have changing pinouts. I really hope that when a board gets ported, people want to keep it that way, because if they want to change pinouts, that means I have to go and change those pinouts. No fun. With Philip, it was not as challenging, but it had its moments. Uh, it's a microcontroller, not an FPGA, so I have to deal with certain limitations. If you have an SPI bus running at uh, 10 megahertz, and then you want to change your register within a few clock cycles of that so that you can start replying with the correct data as a slave, it just it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So I have to state the limitations in the qualification. The interface, there's many ways to talk to something, and when you have many options, it's sometimes hard to choose one. Everybody has their own opinions, their own kind of biases. Uh, so just going forward is another thing. Uh, feature implementations and requests, sometimes people want things that I can't provide, sometimes people don't want things that I want to provide. Um, I mean, I'm always open to ideas, and I just I want people to use this thing. And I also found, uh, I mean, I'm hoping somebody from Digilint is in, in the audience, because this is a great device, the analog, uh, Digilint Analog Discovery 2. It kind of does everything, it's, except the price tag is uh, like 500 times more than standard blue pill, but it is, uh, yeah, would have been, would have been good. Now, there's still lots of work to do. We do have the racks deployed, but I need to, yeah, need to keep going with this. Um, we want to implement more tests. Philip is fairly capable at this point, but the tests still need to be uh, written and worked through. We, have to, we want to add more boards, of course. Now that I got this nice rack set up and I've suffered enough, I, I, I'd like to just be able to pump more out. We want to add, uh, add some triggering methods. So currently we just have you know, a small subset of the Riot maintain maintainers can go and trigger this board and log into this board, or the, this rack. Um, and we'd like to expose that for more people to use. Uh, we want to get a standard output. So we have a certain subset of tests in the robot framework that get generated, or t test outputs that get generated from the robot framework, and we want to coordinate that with many other tests that are run in Riot so that we can start doing these nice statistics and kind of get a better overview of what's going on. You know, especially if we can add some of these power benchmarks in there. That would be quite nice. Uh, and, yeah. One of the things that I was supposed to talk about is, oh, uh, look at how many things were broken and how many things got fixed after. Well, it's kind of hard when your API, when your interface changes and you try to run a test that, that you've just, oh, I've just fixed something, I have this test, now everything's passing, I want to look at what's happened two years ago, and there's no stable, or the API to do this, this test is not stable, and you just have to do a lot of work to actually run tests on old revisions. Uh, obviously, I want to improve the qualification process of, uh, of Philips so that I can iterate and add more features. And finally, deal with the skipping of tests. Sometimes there's just hardware constraints on a board and you want to say, not supported. And I want to be able to somehow integrate that with the test uh, suite. All right. Thank you very much. We have a breakout session uh, tomorrow. I don't know what time, maybe around 10, 10.30. Somebody knows. Uh, and that's going to be particularly interesting for any board maintainers, because it's not only Philip. It's uh, all testing in Riot. Uh, and you can get your hands on some Philip if you come over here. Thanks. I guess there's questions, or maybe not. I'd like to think I'm concise. I was really hoping somebody would speak up about that Cunningham's Moore's Law, Cunningham's thing. Well, no, Actually, he did. What? It was invoking itself. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right. That uh, jump. Do you have a question? Early break. Yeah. Thanks a lot for this uh, excellent presentation and for yeah. all this work. And um, I think uh, 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 one of the, the slides you had at the beginning was also super useful and it was um, uh, uh, something that needs. Uh, I mean, you already alluded to, to that yourself. Um, we have like a number of test frameworks in, this one, in Riot, right? and yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> No, but like the, the complementary aspects of the different test frameworks that we have um, to be able to actually uh, uh, actually expose that better uh, to the whole community. Uh, this this would be like of uh, uh, invaluable um, uh, value, so to speak. And uh, uh, it's great that uh, uh, that this work is actually happening. So uh, awesome. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, no question. It's just a comment. <laughs> All right, so 